Booyah. All right, if this is your first go round with the 30 days to 2500, I want to say, first of all, welcome and thanks for coming. Also, I want to say congratulations to the people who are killing it. Um, got some people, one person's over 20 grand. I'm going to assume RC is uh, like 17, 18. So people are making money. The, the deal is, if you want to do well, you have to do the exercises. This is an action-based course. Also, if you don't have a pen and paper, go get one real quick and put it on your desk because there's going to be some things you have to write down. Also, if you are looking to get the recorded versions because you know we're at day 14 we're almost at the halfway mark if you want the recorded versions there's two options and i'll i'll show them to you at the end of the uh, video but essentially if you want them there's the 99 dollar option for the hustler mindset project and then there's the 99 dollars for the facebook group or lifetime so you can get to record things and essentially what is already there is going to take you about two and a half to three weeks to complete. So there's plenty for you to do. So with that, let's get into it. And boom, we're going to start here. This was from yesterday. This is the actual slide from yesterday because what's happening now is the exercises, the task, they're intensifying and you can't do everything just like that. Uh, this is the reason I put this up there for new people is you now the role play. This is really, really cool. It's, you can have a lot of fun with it and it will open up new avenues to your ability to be a better presenter, to be more convincing, to be a better influencer. It's a great, great exercise. So that was one of the deals from yesterday. And with this course, it's action-based. You will have to do things to be successful with this course. You just can't like, well, I'll just show up and listen to Glendon talk. No, no, it's not that kind of course. There's a lot of crazy stuff that you'll be doing, but it's fun. It really, really is fun. And hold on. Make sure that was right. Okay, we're back on point. Okay, so let's talk about the task map because there was going to be somewhere else, but it's actually where it's supposed to be. Let's talk about the task map. Essentially, you're going to create your own task map. Going back to the sheet of paper, pen or pencil in the calendar, with these things taking more time, you are going to need to organize your schedule for some of these tasks. Because like with the role play, it's going to take a while. You're going to have to set this up and go out and do it. So it's going to take a little pre-planning. And then before we get too deep into what we're doing there I need your word I pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday day by day I will become the hustler I know I can be I am all in this is a way for you to prep your mind for success by actually making a commitment to yourself now I'm gonna do a little do something a little different because like I said this is changing you're going to need this going forward. You're going to need something to write on. You're going to need a pen or paper, or you can use your iPad, or you can use your iPhone if you're not listening to this webinar on it. But the tasks are going to become a little bit more complex, and this, I'm going to make it as fun as possible. Now, this is the big, big thing that many people are not really, really putting their heart into. The commitment is the most important thing that you can do when you're taking this course. And commitment's a choice. You either choose to commit or you choose not to commit. It's a choice. Regardless of what you say, regardless of what you think, it's a choice. And if you haven't made the commitment to making your business better, taking your business to the next level, actually starting a business if you don't have one, it's never going to happen. It's just going to be one of those things that you wish that you had done or could do or potentially will do in the future. But with a commitment, things take shape and form much quicker, much, much quicker, because essentially I want you to be married to your success. Your success is your partner to a degree. And 
you need to treat your partner well. You need to be focused and you need to be on point with being in that marriage to your success because like any other marriage, it's going to be good days. There are going to be bad days, but the commitment's going to carry you through all of that. That is, if you have one. If you don't have a commitment, what happens is what happens. So today, make sure that you're committed to your success. Deeply committed. Now we're going to begin day 14. This is where things are about to take off. I thought that was really cool when I found it that picture of lightning and volcano is like self-contained lightning on the earth. And that's what you're about to create with your business, a form of lightning, a form of power, because I'm going to give you some of the techniques that I discovered when I was in the storage auction business and the contract office, contract furniture office business, and to a degree rent a crate because it's about, you know, at this point you should have, some sense of what you're doing with your business and like if you're brand new it's your first day here i highly recommend that you go ahead and join the group so you can get day one through 13 and a lot of this stuff will make way more sense this is a really fundamental question that you have to ask yourself over and over again how hard do you really work i mean think about it because some people think that when they go to the office, they sit at the desk, they're working. It's like, I'm at work, I'm on the clock, and I'm getting paid. Therefore, I am working. And really, you're not. There are still some, you know, when I was in the military, you said this term, sham, sham jobs, cush jobs. There's still jobs like that. There are people, I mean, essentially, I know one, two, I know four people that, we talked and I said, well, if your job's that easy, why don't you go ahead and put some productivity measures in place, do what you need to do as fast as possible. And the rest of the day is yours for you to do what I call double duty, which is start your business, research your business because you did what you need to do for the job, you know, figure out what you need to do to be above productivity levels. You know, you don't want to just come in at par or under par. You want to be a little bit above. And many of these people in these sham and cush jobs can get their job done in three to four and a half hours a day. Everything I'm talking about. Reports, set up. I have one friend has it on her calendar. She works four hours a day, but she doesn't like just do it all at once. She'll work for an hour, then she'll work on her stuff. Because she said if she did all her work that quick, they would give her more. So <laughs> she spread it out. But She's a writer and she's written her first book almost at work. She gets in, does what she needs to do. And she's, you know, the boss says she's doing such a great job that, you know, that uh, she's in line for a promotion. Now, I want you to think about this. I want you to really, really, really think about this. She's in line for a promotion and she's actually doing. Now, this is the this is the rub. She's working less but she's more productive and she's arranged it because I agree with her. If she got her work done that fast, they would just give her more. And what, what they do, they will sub subsidize someone who's less product, who's still getting paid for sitting around, not doing anything. That's like, Oh, it's almost like a disincentive for that person to even try to do their job. Cause it's like, Oh, well, we're going to give this to this person over here. Who's like a super Saiyan who's super fast. Mm -mm. That happens all the time. So there's work, there's busy, there's productivity, learn the difference. Just because you show up, it means nothing without a plan and defined outcome that you want. You can take these same principles and put them in your business and free up a lot of time, free up a lot of time for you to do other things or to invest more time into income generating activities. Now, for those of you who haven't seen the bull, he's back. I want you to think fast. I want you to write down the largest sale goal you ever had. I mean, whatever number, if a million pops in your, your mind, put it there. Two million pops in your mind, put it there. Whatever, put that number in your mind. Then write it down. 
on a small sheet of paper, take maybe some notebook paper, and get into a size where you can fold it up and maybe double fold it or triple fold it and write that number in with a dollar sign and put it in your wallet. That's simple. That that's a real simple one. That's super simple. Just do that. You could be amazed at what happened in the next five years. Now let's talk about filling your day. I haven't had a job in such a long time that I don't know about this. I don't really have to fill my day because I don't have anyone over my shoulder saying, hey, you need to do this and do this to look busy. You know, if I'm not busy, I'm not busy. If I'm busy, I'm busy. But are you guilty of conducting busy work? This is stuff that doesn't make sense. It's kind of like you need to do it. Something that maybe you should outsource or something that you should delegate to someone else and use your skills and skill sets on the stuff that makes it rain because there are many people who just fill up their day with stuff so they can look busy because they feel that looking busy is looking good and why would you want to look busy doing something for eight nine hours a day when you can get it done for two or three Corch culture a lot of cultures and I, I will share with you with writing because what I love is this happened with self-publishing it used to be, and in some circles, it's still true that if you write really, really fast, you're writing garbage or you're a hack. It's like if it takes a year to write that book, then you really have pulled back skin, muscle, tenue, and just drip blood on the page. And that's going to be awesome. I conducted an experiment with myself. I wrote a book in the weekend. I don't advise doing that if you've never done it before because you writing a lot becomes very physical your your wrists swell up your back hurts because i was in the chair for nine hours each day but i wrote a thirty thousand word book in the weekend it became a bestseller for my other stuff then there's other books that i took a week or two or three or four to write i didn't really do not much and i thought about that then i did it again i wrote some other stuff really fast and it kind of did okay so what i'm telling you is the speed in which you write is still going to be incumbent upon your talent level. So you're either going to get your talent level out faster. And I will tell you this, that when I was writing like that, the typos went down. My continuity was better because typically, like, say you write a passage one day, right? And you don't keep up with it. Then you have to go back and read all that stuff so that it matches up and it makes sense. When you when I was really, really productive, like each book that I've written when on the power base because that's what we're talking about power up your day i've gotten done the first one was 90 days and most of them take a month or two because there's a plan and then there's a formula so i was able to write four books in a year when there was someone i met in the writing group who had been working on the book two years i was able to write four books start from finish while this person was still working on that book and then people go oh god don't say that you know everyone's different if you do the math if you, yes, you right there out there on this webinar, you, if you wrote 250 words a day, which is going to take 15 minutes, right? And you did it every day. You didn't miss one day. You have 90,000 words written at the end of a year. Process. Become part of the process. Figure out your process to be productive. So this thing applies to a lot of stuff. And these are things that I picked up from the job at Renegade, being in the storage auction business. It's amazing. Now, what we're about to do is one of the things that I do on occasion. Since I am now a bum. No, I'm not a bum. But just um, when I'm working a lot, I've learned to manage myself better than doing this stuff. But this is what's called a stretch exercise. Because if you've never done it before, you really don't know what your capabilities are. And when you do this, you're going to find out what your capabilities are. You're going to find out a lot about yourself. So you're going to pick a day. And this is why you have pen, paper, and your uh, a way of uh, formulating your task. And you're going to line up all of your core activities. Now, what is core, what are core activities? Core activities are things that make money. Sourcing, sales, uh, emails. You're going to, for 12 hours a day, work on nothing but core stuff. Now, let me put a disclaimer in here. If you have health issues and you know you have health issues, don't do this. 
Um, if you feel you need to go to a doctor for doing this, go for a doctor. But I am putting the disclaimer, if you've got health issues or something wrong with you and you don't feel that you can do this, don't do it. Now, what's the plan for you? Get an assistant. If you don't already have one and then line up all of the core activities, you train that person and you have them do that stuff and see where they come in with the final sum or tally. Because what I've learned, and this is one of the, this is the method that I used that I got rid of my blogs. I had storage auction guru. I think they're still around because there's stuff on there. I got rid of urban pack rat. I had another one. I just got rid of them because when I did the math and I did the introspection and I got the data, I realized those blogs were not making me any money. None. I was actually losing money by taking my time, effort, and energy to direct people to those spots to read stuff when I was like, yo, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are we trying to do here? We are trying to take over the world. We don't want them to read. We want them to buy. Simple stuff, but it often is overlooked. Now, what you're going to help you with this is to go back to day six and review and implement the power of six. So it's a little self-study because that's going to help you tremendously with this. If you've already, you know, for folks who've been here every day, then you already know what this is about. If you're new, then you'll have to check that out. Now, this is your power schedule. This is, you know, for day one, you're going to do nothing but core profit, profit activities this day. If it doesn't bring profit, if it's not part of the transmission of power to the wheels you're not doing it you're only doing core stuff if sales whatever you have to do to make a sale if you have to make the product to make a sale okay but whatever processes methodology this stuff that's in your business that you need to do to make profit that is all that you're going to do that's it. You're not doing anything else. Other stuff is going to the wayside. You are going to strictly work on core stuff and you're going to do it for eight to 12 hours. That's all you're going to do or longer if you feel that you can. Now, day two, what you're going to do is cut your workload by half. So whatever you did the first day, you're going to cut it in half. So you did 12 hours. Next day, you're doing six and you're going to walk away. You may feel like you can do more, but you're going to walk away. And in the lifting weights, this is called backloading because when I was in the gym and I was doing the power lifting, I kind of implemented some of those power lifting methodologies into my work life. And they worked just as well for work stuff as they did for fitness stuff and getting stronger. Because what happens is and you got your power schedule, right? You already know that on day one, it's mm, you're in fifth gear, pedal to the metal. You are going. But you, what is this? Power schedule. So you know day two, you're not going to have to work that hard. It's planned coasting, if you want to say that. It's planned cutting back. It's planned. It's not like, oh, I don't really feel like doing anything today, so I'm not. No, it's planned. It's totally, totally planned. And what happens is you know that the next day you're going to get to cut back or chill. So you will go harder because this is what happens when you're working hard. You reach a point in diminishing returns. The first few days you're going, you're going, you're going. And it's been scientifically proven that working that hard and going beyond certain time lengths. And I'm going to give a disclaimer there actually is counterproductive, which means the longer you work, the less you get done because you're not being efficient. Now, the disclaimer to that is if you do transcendental meditation, that does not apply. When I'm really meditating hard, I can work, you know, 12, 20 hours a day and there's no there's no drop in efficiency. Now, what happens with meditation and once again, if you're like religious, don't get weirded out because it's a new religion. You don't have to go Buddha. Um, you don't have to do that. Meditation is a mental tool that essentially, if you remember back in the day when Windows came out and how you had to format your hard drive because all of the data was just spread out all over the hard drive. So when the hard drive was looking for stuff, it had to work harder and take a longer time to find stuff because data was out of place. What transcendental meditation does is put your data where it needs to be and it gets rid of fluff. I call it roto ruler of the mind. It takes a lot of stuff out. And it increases your energy, it lowers your heart rate, 
and it makes you more efficient because like say you, you ever have a night where you don't really sleep well you know you got some in your mind when i have nights like that i get up first thing i do is i meditate because that's going to give me energy to offset the lack of rest because a 30 20 to 30 minute meditation session could be like a three to four hour nap to a normal person big big stuff then bam power schedule once again power schedule you're going to go back and repeat day one i know she is pretty strong because that is four twenty four that's four hundred and yeah four thirty five over an underhand clip that's very possible i've seen someone smaller do that so essentially you are scheduling and orchestrating your workload and and there's a reason for this then bam day four you repeat day two so you know you're going to have these days where it's going to be mm, mm, mm. then these other days where you're going to like okay and then and what i highly recommend even if you want to do more don't once you reach that halfway mark of what you did today stop stop right there and go off with your family go take a walk watch tv stop because what you're doing is finding some stuff out about yourself that's very important now when you're doing this chart your energy levels because you know i'll give myself i am a morning person i can get up at three or four o'clock in the morning in between three and four maybe 10 yeah from four to ten I can get more done than I can, once again, if I'm meditating, it doesn't matter. But if I don't meditate and I just wake up and want to just go to it and not meditate, between 4 and 10, 4 and 11, I can get an incredible amount of stuff done because I'm a morning person. That's just how I've been my whole life. I can work all day, but my sweet spot, so to speak, is in the morning. So I gear a lot of stuff to be done in the morning. That's why the videos launch early. That's why you get the email because it works for me and I'm more productive. Now, when you're doing these four, you know, because essentially you're going to do four days. You're going to bam, go hard, bam, reduce intensity, bam, go hard, bam, reduce intensity. You're going to figure out are you a day person, a night person? Doesn't matter because once you figure out what your sweet spot is and everyone's different then you, if possible, because, you know, if you have your own business, you may be able to do this. If not, just depending upon family commitments and things like that, you'll be able to adjust your work or your most important work to your critical peak hours, whatever they may be. So if you know that waking up is really hard to do and I'm, I've seen people, they can get up at six, but their body does not wake up to 10. And it's just like. And then 10 o'clock, hey, what's up? I mean, it's just like it's a different person. It's like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. I was like, you were sleepy Hyde. Now you're Mr. Jekyll or what, whatever. But this is super important because this goes back to creating more efficiency and more productivity for your business. Because this stuff is super important. Because there are many people who try to work against their natural propensity of who they are and their biorhythm or energy levels or whatever you want to call it. When you start working in tune with your body like that, once again, it's possible. Because like I said, you're married, you got family, you got to say the kids got to be up to school. Some of these things will have to be modulated depending upon your family life, your work life, what you have going on. But when you chart this stuff and you figure out what's your sweet spot, what's your energy level, where you really, really shine, you could literally double your productivity in two weeks. So say you're listing, let's use eBay. Say, because I see this and, I, and, I, and I, I people are like, yeah, I got 10 things listed, 20 things. You can schedule listings on eBay using Inkfrog. I don't know if you can do it with the main platform. I guess you can do it because it used to be you had to pay for it, but I think it's free now. So here's a plan. Say you're, you have about 100 items to go on eBay. And this is something that I did very successfully. You take 100 items and you put them up on the schedule. So, okay, so you want everything to go live 6 p.m. Sunday, right? So you go ahead and schedule everything to go live. But you're only listing 10, 15, 20 items a day. And then once you get them all listed and scheduled, then Sunday they pop. Then the next week 
you've got a hundred items going off auction or buy it now, whatever. Because it, it doesn't seem to matter if it's an auction or buy it now. They seem to always wait to the last minute before they buy. You have all that money going off. And then you, you learn. Because what, what happens is you you created yourself a program versus having 10 things going on. Because the thing is, now we'll tell you if you have 100 things and they're really good and you sell a lot, the shipping's going to be very interesting if you're not prepared for that. But that's the th way that we did it. Because we noticed that, because you know, sometimes people will not buy something because they'll see two or three of the things you have and they're like, okay, if I get this, then I'm going to have to email them because that doesn't go off that week. But when you put a whole block of stuff and it's like, okay, you know, I guess you know, free shipping on this and that. You can induce people to buy because they know that it's going to be less hassle. I have learned this in the last five years of being online that it doesn't take a lot of friction for someone to not buy something. That whole thing with the time, like they want both of them, but they can't get both and they got to wait. That will dissuade someone from buying from you and going out and seeking that situation. Simple stuff like that will will just because people are very, very impatient, very, very impatient. And it doesn't take much for the knock you out of the sales seat. I mean, you just got caught blocked because, you know, Sally Sue had her hats all going off on the same day. But you had your hats going off on Saturday and the other one was going off on Sunday. Doesn't seem like a big difference. But for people who are impatient, who will just want to click it and forget it. This is stuff they think about. This is stuff that will keep them from buying. So after you do your first four days, chart your energy level. You have to write this stuff down. And then for some of you who it doesn't matter, you're you're like in an awesome position. You really are because it doesn't matter. But like I said, I'm a morning person. Um, doesn't seem like most people are morning people because I've had friends. It's like I call them up at six or seven. Good morning. You're disgustingly happy. No one should be happy. This happy this in the morning. <laughs> Like, I mean, seriously, it's, it's just really, really important to some people. All right. One more task. Now, this one's one where you're going to need your task sheet because you're going to have to get some stuff. Yes, you're going to have to spend a little money or you can go to Goodwill and get the stuff for next to nothing. Uh, you're going to convince a friend, family member to put on clown makeup and take pictures for Facebook. <laughs> I know some people just like, I'm leaving this. I'm leaving this. I'm out of here. But seriously, that's 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 one of the tasks. And this is why I want you to do it, because it's going to teach you how introducing something new to someone you already know will reinvigorate them. I'm telling you, this is not going to be a hard sell. This isn't going to be hard. You, and if you got a kid around, oh, it's going to be super easy. If you I'm serious, it's not going to be a hard sell. Trust me. Trust me a long time. All right, and boom, I am back on schedule. So what we're going to do is move that over there. Typically, I answer the questions after I come out of the presentation. So we're going to see what do we have in the way of questions. Okay, I don't know what that number represents, Walter. Uh, David, writing on orbit was really rattling, but I'm, I'm telling you, man, it makes you think about stuff you normally just don't think about. It can be kind of like, er, Josh, yes, you know about Dragon Ball Z. I used to love that. I used to love that show. Dwayne, how hard? I punched the clock during the day on a sham cush job. My equipment runs at a constant rate by getting in early and having it loaded and running and i have one to three hours to review this webinar right my goals this is dead on i tried to do more but the employer doesn't want us to double up run two machines at the same time and i think that it's part because that's an idea they didn't come from a meeting of cubicle drones i'm telling you there's a lot of people who are in this position and if you got a job like that make it more efficient for you do what you need to do for the man and then do what you need to do for yourself the man and it's that's why i call it double duty because it's fun you can really get away with a lot of stuff uh Dwayne, you can schedule for free on ebay there it is yeah i mean we we've ran into that the first year because we were shipping out so much and my first was like you know it'd be better if we just have a bunch of stuff go off on one day and then spend a few days shipping it worked out wonderful for us because if you're always like listing 
and shipping and listing and shipping and listing and shipping. And the thing is, if you have buy it now, so you, you can still have this issue, but it, it becomes a nightmare at some point. Uh, this is from J.D. Bailey. Glad you mentioned not working against your productivity. Many books and school of thought purport that you have to get up early to be productive, stressful and make lots of money. If you have no place to be, typically I get up anywhere from between 930 and 1130 and go to bed between 12 and 3 a.m. I mean, that's what I do. I work with within my energy level and it makes a huge difference. Like I do work stuff in the morning and then I goof off in the evenings because, you know, it doesn't require much energy. But anything I need to do critical, I'll do it in the morning. Uh, the way my sales bumped up with free shipping and buy it now often for more than the item was listed for as an auction with standard shipping. I've seen that quite a bit. It's amazing how that happens. That just shows you that they will pay more money to get it faster and not have to deal with an auction. Tracy, my mother quit real estate to be a kid's clown. <laughs> I bet she's having a lot of fun. Uh, David. The TED Talk on the Hyder Ride, it was really good. I didn't even know there was a TED Talk on the obituary thing. That's very good. Thanks for um, mentioning that. Just Google TED Talk on how to write your obituary. Uh, Tracy, did you have scattered endings to the listing that all went off on one day or did they all end on the same day? We had staggered times uh, back in the day when WoW did it. For some reason, 6 p.m., endings were hot between six and eight i don't know what it was about those hours it was sunday tuesday and thursday with good nights for us and that's when we like stack a lot of stuff but we would have staggered times and sometimes like five minutes between auctions 10 10 minutes stuff like that david when you first wrote your own obituary was it realistic or did it feel like narcissistic fantasies like mine uh my first obituary i wrote freaked me the hell out um it's changed over time. The first one was written in the mindset of someone who was still part of the mental system, part of the farm. I was still sheepish. And I'll tell you, it was like, you know, I wanted to be known as this person that was real friendly, uh, successful. And it was just like, it was kind of dry. And it, it kind of made me think it because I rewrote it like six months later because I was just like, because you, you don't really think about that stuff until you do it. And when you do it, you're like, well, I don't know about that. But yeah, mine was kind of boring. I like yours. Feeling like narcissistic fantasies like mine. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay. That's fine. That's cool. You can send it to me. And um, while I'm waiting for questions because there seems to be like a little delay. Let me go and do this. Okay, everyone's like, hey, how can I join whatever, whatever? All right, here are the list. This is 300 bucks lifetime for Gumroad. And this is Muff to Muff. And this is if you want to be on the Hustler Mindset Project. It's a tab. It's just, you know, there's, like I said, 13 completed webinars there. And you can go in there. Because there, there's this thing, and I need to send this email out. People hate Facebook. It's like... Don't make me join Facebook. I'll punch somebody's kitten or something like that. I don't know. So I've put that up there and you can get the same experience for those folks who hate, hate Facebook. Uh, Dwayne, what I hate is that when I work second shift on my sham job, I can bust it during the day and then coast on the clock. Now I'm stuck on day shift with fewer hours to serve my customers who tend to close at 5 p.m. So here I am rethinking how I'm going to end the round to get my by my folks at my JLB to be able to learn some of these things, which should be obvious is helping me create a great deal of bypass the time clock for my future. It's a lot you can do if you got one of those kind of jobs. Like when I was working in a lab back in the day before healthcare reform. You know, it was like that, like most of the, everything went down between like the first four hours and the rest of the time was just kind of like you were just there unless some went off. Then Bill and Hillary got in the office, came with healthcare reform and all that stuff changed. 
I remember when Christmas was a gravy day. Not anymore. A lot of people use Christmas Eve and stuff to come in and get lab work and stuff done that they can't get done during the week. Uh, Betty. Can the power schedule be adjusted as a parent? There's nothing I can do for 12 hours. Well, yeah, of course. You know, there, there's going to be exceptions because, you know, yeah, you, you will have to modulate that. Oh, uh, let's see the link. Actually, you don't have to donate. Uh, nobody's getting bumped anymore, so don't worry about it. Because I remember that. Uh, Dwayne. Dwayne says, Facebook is bad simply because it raids our personal information. Not that it's in, it's in a bad thing to do, and yet I joined it so I could get the webinar recorded sessions. So if you know you have the product that provides value to get me on FB. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I'm glad you joined. Uh, David, I've been telling everyone I know about my current business and future businesses with it. One of the things I wanted to have done was a commercial, and I told a friend of mine who consequently has been taking voiceover classes for a year. He offered to do it for a buck, and I'm going to give him 20. People give a hand up when they see you determined. You make a really, really good point there. You make an excellent point. When people see that you're working hard, they are more inclined to assist you. Now, this is what's really interesting about a lot of people. I am kind of that guy that doesn't give beggars money. It's like, this is how a beggar gets money out of me. If he comes up and just says, hey, may I have a dollar? That's going to get more money out of me quicker than, hey, you know, my name's Eddie. Shake my hand. You know, here's my driver's license. I'm from New York. I'm, the pitch is going to make me like get away from you. The thing is with people that when you impress someone with your hustle, your determination, they frequently will help you out. And it's amazing because it's about being in action. When you are being active, when you really have that genese qua, so to speak, you draw people to you that can help you. Uh, Jasmine, are you investing or do you plan to invest in Bitcoin? I am on the sidelines with Bitcoin and all this other stuff right now because this is the thing. You know, I'll, I'll give you because I do believe at some point we are going to have a digital currency like, you know, Star Trek credits is coming when I don't know. I don't my crystal ball is not that sharp. I'm not into that stuff because regardless of how you pay for stuff, you're still going to have to make stuff, create stuff, serve people. The payment thing, you know, for, I guess for the people who go in, got in early, because some people make crazy money because there was only so many Bitcoins. But I'm not really messing with that stuff right now. It's not even on my radar. David, yep, inaction is when you give to get. What's that saying? When you want something done, give it to a busy person. It's kind of crazy, but it's very true. Uh, Dwayne, voiceover guy. Dude. There's a college student advertising for graphic design work locally on sale. So I guarantee you he can find some college students looking to expand their portfolio and probably get the work done for beer and pizza money. Yeah, kind of like internships. Because someone asked me, could you know, like many of you, if you have a business and you want to put an ad on Craigslist, you can do an internship, uh, put some structure to it, and tell that person that they're going to get a reference of some out of it. You'll be amazed at who shows up. I... um typically pay people because a lot of the stuff I'm doing is is I once done a certain way and like the internship thing is just not going to work for me but if you want to get economical assistance or help for certain things that you can actually help the other person you'll be sure you'd be surprised at what shows up Tony Marshall when you show you're trying to do it anyway without their help you're not asking for a handout or help yeah you bring people in other way, payment of any kind represents energy expended to attain a unit of coinage. Uh, Josh, do you have any more time management tips? I feel like at times I get too busy with my main business, but enough, not but not enough time for my side hustle. Uh, I'll give you a few suggestions. Say you have four businesses, right? And what you do is you stack them. Which business is the least fussy baby? So whatever's the least fussy baby, you go ahead and create 
processes where it runs without a lot of your input then you go to your other two and you just work your way out so you situate and set them up where they're running as much on autopilot as possible or you outsource and then spend more time with the other ones because that's just one way now say you've got two businesses and you can work one business on monday you can work one business on tuesday it just depends what your businesses are do they need to be open seven days a week there's a lot of ways to slice it Timothy, Glennon, how do you go about picking a business partner? A buddy of mine that I taught how to use eBay wants to work together. He finds quality stuff but has poor customer service. Yeah, on eBay, that's a killer right there. Essentially, you want to find someone that has as much to lose as you do. When you have inequitable partnerships, that can be a lot of um, fighting and stuff. But you want to find someone that is where you are. Inter mentally but you also want to find someone that has skill sets and things that you don't have because if they're just a clone of you what's the point you want to find you know access like say this guy who's bad with customer service i wouldn't partner with him i would hire him as a part-time employee and pay him part-time money and then say if you continue to do a good job and you continue to manage your ebay really well then a few months we'll talk about coming on because that time you'll get to evaluate if he's serious or not. I would that a lot of times people try to bring folks on for equity type pay, which should be pay position. Equity is if you list so much, you get this bonus and spiff. And, no, just pick a number like six, seven, eight, nine, ten bucks an hour. And like so because most people want that. If I work four hours, when am I going to get it in four hours? It terrifies someone who's not an entrepreneurially or hustler driven person that's like, I'm going to work four hours and I could potentially make no money. They're like, it doesn't excite them. Tomorrow, you have to give to get. Giving yourself to people shows lack of fear and the willingness to serve. They like that. This is true. Uh, the way an eBay guy buy from him, make him a vendor. The fastest way to seek your friendship is to get in a board, a partnership. <laughs> yep. Uh, Manny, where can I start to write a book on marketing and promotion for musicians? Like, how can I host it? I want to do what you're doing, but kind of more for musicians and whatnot. Well, you first of all create a blog for the musicians. Then you start putting stuff that you're going to put in the book on the blog and you get feedback. If the musicians and stuff love it, then, OK, you've got something you can go with. But if they don't like what you're going to put in the book, you can literally write the book and it won't sell. So, yeah, take a blog, do some experimentation, see what you're going to put out is something that's going to work and figure out. And I got a question. <clears throat> do musicians like read this kind of stuff? Not trying to be weird, but it's like all the musicians I know, they're so into the music, they don't do nothing else. So you may have to make an audio book for them. Uh, Dwayne, yep, variable income is scary for a lot of people. What if it's in the 1,000 to the 2,000 range? Well, what I mean, the 2,000 range, not so scary. I mean, that's the thing with a business owner. You know, it's like 80,000 a year, 150,000 a year. It's variable, but it's uh, way more. It's not as scary as you said. Uh, David, wouldn't YouTube channel be more likely a venue for a musician than a blog? Yes and no. There are so many musicians on YouTube, it's very easy to get lost. And also, he wants to do training and tutorials and stuff. So, it may be a combination of both. But if he, you know, because he was talking about writing a book, that was the thing. So, because, like I said, you got to test that because I do a lot of testing with books and things. And before I know if I'm going to write it, I also know if it's going to sell. Uh, he's already doing YouTube. Uh, Josh, tell that musician guy to look up Jay King. He offers great free advice about the music business on his blog talk radio show. That would be Google J King blog talk radio. Thank you so much for the recommendation. 
Carmen, bit good sounds good until you find out that you're actually investing in Google Black Market Reload or Silk Road to find out the truth. Google Black Market Reloaded or Silk Road to find out the truth. Like I said, I, I don't know a lot about Bitcoin and I'm not messing with it right now. I've heard a lot, but I don't know a lot. Uh, Jimmy S. What would be a good method of keeping track of inventory and a profit from each storage unit when you have a large quantity of items? This is what we did. The big stuff is easy. We had an Excel spreadsheet, bedroom furniture, whatever, units, such and such. What we did with the smalls, we separated stuff that was eBay viable and put that on a separate sheet. And anything else that wasn't really worth keeping up with, it went to the dollar section. Because you can buy a unit, say a 10 by 20, and literally come out with 4,000 things, including the clothing, knickknacks, dishes, and stuff. That's a lot of time to process a lot of stuff. So you've got to make some determinations on what you're going to process. So, like I said, we would go over, and every now and then we miss something, and someone would be like, oh, man, this is great in the dollar section, but we live with it because we didn't miss that much. And to go ahead and spend you would have to pay someone to sit down and write all that stuff. It could take them eight to 24 hours of work just to inventory that stuff. And my partner and I got to the point, we can inventory a unit and just comb it really good in about an hour and a half. You know, unless it was, you know, and that's a big unit. Two hours for like a, a, t a 20 by 40. Uh, Michael, what site should I go to to create a blog? Great question. I'm going to give you a few options. If you don't really care about doing anything with that blog in the future, just go to Blogger or WordPress and get a free blog. If you care, if you want to do something and make money with that blog, go ahead and get yourself a self-hosted blog because the rules and reg the rules of self-hosted plus free are so different because well, many of the free blogs and a lot of them are great. You just can't do certain things. Uh, the benefit with the free blogs is you can build a community and get people to follow you much faster. Whereas with the self-hosted blog, you're going to have to do all that stuff yourself. Uh, WordPress. This is where you, and this is WordPress. This is what you get. It's um pretty cool. You can go in here and create a blog, talk about whatever, and they'll host it for free. You just have to sign in. Oh, uh, Leslie and Jay King of Kings in the Morning Radio Show. My brother does that. Jay's okay. Uh, Richard, my partner is the polar opposite of me, and it's been very profitable. I would recommend for anyone that you add to your team. Yeah, you want to get someone that isn't you because it's not. It's going to be a fight. <laughs> it's going to be a fight. Uh, Dwayne, most web domains offer blog software with your hosting package. Yeah, I mean, pretty much all of them do unless you're doing something like with Amazon. Uh, Manny, Bitcoin currency is a great idea. The reason for the negativity is that it's the only way you could pay for items or a tour website called Silk Road, which was a virtual black market like eBay for drugs. <laughs> I learn something new every day. Uh, Leslie Ann, I need to design a logo. Do you think Fiverr is okay? Yeah. I mean, unless you're going to do something super slick, then you would go to Odesk or Elance and you're going to be looking at 75 to 400 bucks. Uh, Joshua, why do you recommend Gumroad? Gumroad is not just a payment processor. Gumroad is a landing page and a hosting site. Gumroad gives you payment processing, the ability to load up to five gigabytes per item of product, which means if you are an independent movie maker, you can upload your movie to Gumroad, stream it from Gumroad, and sell it across the world. Two, they're pretty transparent. They don't have a lot of issues. It is what it is. And typically when I've had an issue, I email someone, they fix it, and life goes on. I've been with Gumroad since last May, I believe, and I've had three issues, and one actually wasn't me. One actually was my fault, so let's just say two. I can live with that. 
Wow. 20 million, 20 million a year in sales when they got shut down. Uh, David, would you steer people away from Create Space these days? Nope, I wouldn't. Create Space is actually way better than it used to be. Now, this is the deal with Create Space. If you're selling a real cheap book, you're not going to make any money. Uh, say your book's like 12 bucks, they're gonna you're going to get three to four dollars maybe, <laughs> depending on how thick the book is. So, I would use Create Space like this because the thing is, you can have it where they're automatically going to put the book on Amazon. And this is something else you should know. Once you use Create Space to put your book on Amazon, even if you pull it a day later, that book is going to stay on the Amazon site forever. They'll never take it down. Because I had a book I didn't want up there, and this is like we can't take it down. But my deal with Create Space is you would use it because this is something you can do, and a lot of people don't know this. You can use Create Space, upload your book and everything, and when someone buys a book from you, you can go into the dashboard and order the book and ship it directly to the customer. Just put your credit card in, put their address in, boom. And you can do regular shipping or expedited shipping. That's what I did for years. Because that was the reason, because I remember someone on YouTube was like, Glenn is ready to roll these books. He's got all this inventory. And I was just like, <laughs> fool, I have no inventory. Uh, Leslie Ann, do you pay state taxes on eBay sales or just federal? If you file your taxes right, you're going to pay both if you have a sales. Because some states don't have a state tax. Yeah, it's decent tech, you know, support. Like I said, I don't have a lot of issues with them. Yeah, on the issue with taxes, I'm going to tell you about the future. Since there is so much money online and there will be even more, you can just expect to have to deal with the same tax issues that brick and mortar businesses had to deal with for years. They just really got this thing together because most places, unless you do 20 grand, they don't even send you a 1099 name, you know. So that's the threshold. So essentially, if you're listening and you want to make 100 grand and not have a 1099 sent to you, you have five Gumroad accounts or five eBay accounts or five PayPal accounts. And all, you know, it's like, oh, we're at 19,000. Then move on to the next one. I know someone doing that. That's why I'm laughing. Uh, yep, expect the thieves in DC to pick your online pocket harder and deeper. Unless you know, you know the game. Okay, uh, it's 4.51. Got this puppy started early. I'm going to end it. Uh, hold on for another second to see if any more questions. And if you want to join, go to the last video that I put up. There's actually two. And you can go third lifetime. I recommend it because this is 99 bucks a month. This is 300 lifetime. 99, 300. Not, think about it. Think about it. Think fast. And uh, also, if you haven't gotten it, get the free audio book. It's going to help you out quite a bit. And uh, I will be here tomorrow, 4 p.m. And I'll see you on the good side. My mom said, you're going to have to go and have us going to jail for tax evasion. I didn't say anything about paying, not paying taxes. I'm, I said nothing. I just said, and I will restate before I shut this down, that if you don't want a 1099 and you keep your five things under 20 grand, you're not going to get a 1099. I didn't say anything about not paying taxes. I'm real clear about that. I will never, ever tell anyone to not pay their taxes. And that will be it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, whoa, whoa, there's more. Hold on. I, <laughs> when I get 300 in cash, I know where it's going. Disclaimer. Tony Marshall. Oh, Lord, we're going to burn in hell. All right, that's it. I'm out of here. I'll see you guys on the good side. We'll be back tomorrow, and uh, this will be up um, all paid sites late tonight. That's funny. My boss said going to jail for tax evasion. That's funny. I didn't mention anything about not paying your taxes. I don't know where that came from. <laughs>